This video is brought to you by Blessed Be God Boutique, maker of Catholic fashionable apparel, handmade accessories, and more. Once again, we return to the subject of deaconettes. The move by the Synod on Synodality to create, quote, more sp unique spaces for women in the church. This is all a part of a larger program that we are told is to make the church more welcoming and inclusive of the laity. That the lay position and the lay, the laity's demands and the laity's opinions on things in the church somehow matter for how the church is to be governed. The word revolution comes to mind, even though you will hear explicitly the cardinal we're going to talk about today, you'll hear him explicitly say he hates using that word. Of course he hates using that word because the church and Catholics have always shied away from such language, to use such language in a positive way. For us, the word revolution has very negative connotations. We don't call for it. We, in fact, oppose it because the culture we live in is one that is revolutionary in nature. And we tend to lean more towards the natural law and the law of God. And, of course, the social reign of Christ the King. And revolution is, on its face, an abject rejection of the reign of Christ the King and the law of God. And so they don't like the word revolution because, as you'll see, they understand very clearly that they the only reason they're pushing for this deaconette situation is because the world is demanding it. This, they understand is a further secularization of the church. Why they give into this, I'm not exactly sure, except, of course, that they are heretics. And as such, heretics have no qualms about admitting that they believe the Catholic Church has been wrong on any number of issues going back to antiquity. Such is the nature, nature of being a heretic. You believe that you yourself have finally gotten the truth, and that the institution that you are part of has always been wrong on the truth. It's a truly arrogant, prideful position, but this is where we are today. And so the issue of deaconettes is once again on the menu. So from headline from LifeSite News, Top Cardinal says female deacons are a, quote, natural deeping of the Lord's will. Cardinal Mario Gresh, one of the two leading cardinals in charge of Pope Francis's Synod on Synodality, endorsed so-called female deacons and a different space for women in the church. So Cardinal Gresh is one of the co-chairs of the Synod on Synodality, along with Cardinal Hollerick. Cardinal Gresh is another one of these cardinals who should be understood as being a possible contender to be a Francis II at the next papal conclave. He is of like mind with Francis, has been one of the two leaders of the Synod on Synodality for several years now, and has had a lot of time meeting with other cardinals. All those things will boost his popularity, especially if he is seen as someone with all the skill set needed to be Pope. Take a little comfort in that, I think, but that doesn't mean he's going to be the one who steps out on the loggia. He's just someone to keep an eye on when that time inevitably comes. After all, Francis is 87 and not in exactly the best physical condition anymore. So, keep praying for everybody involved in this, but don't be surprised if Gresh or Hollerick or somebody pro with high enough profile like them from the Synod on Synodality emerges on the loggia at the next conclave. And that won't be a good thing in the slightest. But here he is telling us, that the Synod on Synodality is practically all but guaranteed to be giving us deaconesses at the next, after the next phase is done in October 2024. A process that should have been done in 2023, but got extended to this year, and then got extended again into 2025. It is the Synod that will never end. From the article, quote, Cardinal Mario Gresh, one of the two leading cardinals in charge of the Synod on Synodality, has appeared to contradict Catholic teaching, stating that, quote, the female diaconate and a different space for women in the church are a natural deepening of the Lord's will. Speaking on the sidelines of meetings of the Swiss Catholic bishops, Cardinal Mario Gresh gave his extensive thoughts on the current status of the multi-year Synod on Synodality, accentuating themes of forms of equality in the Church while also speaking on harmony and unity in response to more difficult questions about the fallout following fiducia supplicants. Gresh, who serves as Secretary General the General Secretary of the Synod of Bishops, highlighted the new study groups that Pope Francis has established, and that will study ten themes from the Synod. 
This move, said Gresh, showed how Francis is treating the Synod on Synodality differently than previous Synods, by effectively curtailing the discussion and giving the post-Synod instruction to the Roman Curia before the Synod has even finished. The Cardinal explained, The Synod for the first time is being held in two sessions. After the October 2023 Assembly, all the points discussed were summarized in a summary report. What is new is that the Holy Father identified ten themes in the same report and assigned them to interdicastoral groups asking for further responses. In the past, the exhortation was always post-synodal, but in doing so, Francis has once again shown that he is listening. Gresh described the Pope's selection of discussed themes for the new groups as dealing with, quote, aspects of life of the church on the road, but also the relationship with the changing society, end quote. Note that he called this part of the sort of a ongoing or deepening revelation by Christ. He's saying basically that revelation has continued. We now have a that God suddenly wants deaconettes when it wasn't the case before. That seems to be my reading of it. That's curious language, given that uh, revelation ended with the with the passing of the last apostle. But you know, anything to push for their new bizarre religion on the church, one based on changing social norms. And it is these changing social norms that the church is apparently supposed to respond to. And it's true. The church should respond to changing social norms, not by giving in to them, but by resisting them, but by correcting them, by standing up and telling society no when the world wants to change in ways that defy the law of God. I know this is not the most popular thing to say, but we're not here to make friends. We're here to tell the truth. That's the whole point of witnessing for the gospel, to stand up against lies and to tell people about the saving message of Christ and how it requires all of us to conform to it. The church must need change to meet the needs of a changing society. That's what Cardinal Gresh is telling us. That ch changing society has a dictatorial impulse, as Cardinal Ratzinger himself said in the 1980s when talking about cultural relativism. Relativism might not be the best word to describe what the West is going through right now, though. Though, since the values of secular society are being forced on the church in an imperial way, that's what we're seeing here with the synod on synodality. The changing norms of the culture require the church to address issues that conflict with the world. And not by correcting the evils of the world, but by correcting timeless Catholic practices to reflect the values of the world, to supplant the church's teachings and values with those of the secular world. Ratzinger had a lot to say on this during the 1980s. Um, one thinker sums up Ratzinger's thought on this in this way, though. So, quote, In today's liberal democracies, Ratzinger has observed the move to atheism is not as it was in the 19th century, a move towards the objective world on the scientific of the scientific rationalist. That was the modern way, and it is now being rejected, in favor of a new postmodern way. The new way is not toward objectivity, but toward subjectivism. Not toward truth as its criterion, but toward power. This, Ratzinger fears, is a move back toward the justification of ending someone in the name of tolerance and subjective choice. Along with that move, he has observed, haven't we all, comes a dictatorial impulse to treat anyone who has a different view as intolerant. For instance, those on the religious right who hold that there are truths worth giving up everything for, and objective goods to be pursued and objective evils to be avoided, are now held to be intolerant fundamentalists, guilty of discrimination. In other words, the new di dictatorial impulse declares that the only view permissible among reasonable people is the view that all subjective choices are equally valid. It declares further that anyone who claims that there are objective truths and objective goods and evils is intolerant. Such persons are to be expelled from the community or at a minimum re-educated. That is to say, all Catholics and others like them must be converted to relativism or sent to, in to into cultural re retraining programs. And mostly, quote, and that has become the standard by which the culture operates now. Though it does appear to be finally facing some method of some amount of rejection by the population, given how Hollywood, major businesses that we can rattle off names of if you want, uh, political institutions aligned with all of them, and the broader cultural institutions are all getting rejected. People have had enough, <laughs> frankly. But let's back to the LifeSite article because here we're talking about deaconettes. We must have deaconettes according to Mario Gresh because the culture is changing and putting pressure on the church. That's the message of the co-chair of the synod and the man who could also stand to follow Francis into the papacy as Francis II. Quote, 
As LifeSite has reported, the fifth discussion theme for the newly formed groups includes the subject of the role of women in the church and a growth quote in the pastoral responsibilities entrusted to them in all areas of life and mission of the church. It is this question that will encompass the, quote, possible access of women to the diaconate, drawing on the October 2023 synthesis report and the 2016 and 2020 commissions on so-called, quote, female deacons. When asked about this in the interview, Gresh shied away from using the term revolution to describe, quote, the female diaconate. Instead, he stated, quote, I don't use terms like revolution. The female diaconate and a different space for women in the church are a natural deepening of the Lord's will. They express and demonstrate the dynamism inherent in the history of the church. With the use of, quote, female deacons now officially tasked to one of the study groups, the topic is not officially due to be discussed in this October session of the Synod on Synodality. However, key members and the Pope himself have continued to give signals that they are lobbying for female deacons during the October meetings, or at least open to such lobbying, end quote. A further deepening of the Lord's will, one that Francis is lobbying for to get the Synod to comply. The chances that they don't discuss this in October are slim to none. You know it. I know it. Pretty much anybody paying attention knows it. They're going to discuss this, and there, we, we know that there are already documents in the works for this. Deaconettes are coming one way or the other. This has been the... This is how it happened with divorce and remarried Holy Communion. We were told no, no, no by Francis over and over again until he changed his mind with Amoris Laetitia. And we are now seeing the same thing on this. He even said the same thing for the Fiducia Supplicant's blessings. And now we have this. It all just remains to be seen if he's got time to pull it off and if the next conclave goes the way he wants it to so it can't be undone. All that remains to be seen. Hopefully you'll stick around as we cover all that together. So hit like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So to sharing this on social media, that helps too. If you ever thought about becoming a patron or supporter of Return to Tradition, there are links in the description box below. It does really help keep these messages coming daily. But let me know what you think about this in the comments, please. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.